The Culprit Fay by Joseph Rodman Drake From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao as narrator Craig Franklin as the Sentry Elf Jason in Panama as the Monarch Sonia as the Sylphid Queen And Thomas Peter as the Culprit Fay The Culprit Fay my visual orbs are purged from film, and lo, instead of Anster's turnip bearing veils, I see old Fairyland's miraculous show. Her trees of tinsel, kissed by freakish gales, her ooves that, cloaked in leaf gold, skim the breeze, and fairies swarming. Tenants Anster fair, tis the middle watch of a summer's night. The earth is dark, but the heavens are bright. Naught is seen in the vault on high, but the moon and the stars and the cloudless sky. And the flood, which rolls its milky hue, a river of light on the welkin blue. The moon looks down on old Cronest. She mellows the shades on his shaggy breast, and seems his huge grey form to throw in a silver cone on the wave below his sides are broken by swats of shade by the walnut bough and the cedar made and through their clustering branches dark glimmers and dies the firefly spark like starry twinkles that momently break through the rifts of the gathering tempest's rack the stars are on the moving stream and fling as its ripples gently flow a burnished length of wavy beam in an eel-like spiral line below the winds are whist and the owl is still a bat in the shelvy rock is hid and naught is heard on the lonely hill but the crickets chirp and the answer shrill of the gauze winged katydid and the plaint of the wailing whippoorwill who moans unseen and ceaseless sings ever a note of wail and woe till morning spreads her rosy wings and earth and sky in her glances glow tis the hour of fairy ban and spell the wood tick has kept the minutes well he has counted them all with click and stroke deep in the heart of the mountain oak and he has awakened the sentry elf who sleeps with him in the haunted tree, to bid him ring the hour of twelve, and call the fays to their revelry. Twelve small strokes on his tinkling bell, t'was made of the white snail's pearly shell. Midnight comes, and all is well. Hither, hither, wing your way, tis the dawn of the fairy day. They come from beds of lichen green, they creep from the mullein's velvet screen some on the backs of beetles fly from the silver tops of moon-touched trees where they swung in their cobweb hammocks high and rocked about in the evening breeze some from the humbird's downy nest they had driven him out by elfin power and pillowed on plumes of his rainbow breast had slumbered there till the charmed hour some had lain in the scoop of the rock with glittering ising stars inlaid and some had opened the four o'clock and stole within its purple shade and now they throng the moonlight glade above below on every side the little minim forms arrayed in the tricksy pomp of fairy pride they come not now to rim the lee and freak and dance around the tree, or at the mushroom ball to sup, and drink the dew from the buttercup. A scene of sorrow waits them now, for an ouve has broken his vestal vow. He has loved an earthly maid, and left for her his woodland shade. He has lain upon her lip of dew, and sunned him in her eye of blue, found her cheek with his wing of air, 
played in the ringlets of her hair, and nestling on her snowy breast, forgot the lily king's behest. For this, the shadowy tribes of air to the elfin court must haste away, and now they stand expectant there to hear the doom of the culprit fay. The throne was reared upon the grass of spicewood and of sassafras. On pillars of mottled tortoise shell hung the burnished canopy, and o'er it gorgeous curtains fell of the tulip's crimson drapery. The monarch sat on his judgment seat, on his brow the crown imperial shone. The prisoner fay was at his feet, and his peers were ranged around the throne. He waved his scepter in the air. He looked around and calmly spoke. His brow was grave and his eye severe, but his voice in a softened accent broke. Fairy, fairy, list and mark, thou hast broke thine elfin chain. Thy flamewood lamp is quenched and dark, and thy wings are dyed with a deadly stain. Thou hast sullied thine elfin purity in the glance of a mortal maiden's eye. Thou hast scorned our dread decree, and thou shouldst pay the forfeit high. But well I know her sinless mind as pure as the angel forms above. Gentle and meek, and chaste and kind, such a spirit well might love. Fairy, had she spot or taint, bitter had been thy punishment, tied to the hornet's shardy wings, tossed on the pricks of nettles' stings, or seven long ages doomed to dwell with the lazy worm in the walnut shell, or every night to writhe and bleed beneath the tread of the centipede, or bound in a cobweb dungeon dim, your jailer a spider, huge and grim, amid the carrion bodies to lie of the worm and the bug and the murdered fly these it had been your lot to bear had a stain been found on the earthly fair now list and mark our mild decree fairy this your doom must be thou shalt seek the beach of sand where the water bounds the elfin land thou shalt watch the oozy brine till the sturgeon leaps in the bright moonshine then dart the glistening arch below and catch a drop from his silver bow the water sprites will wield their arms and dash around with roar and rave and vain are the wooded spirits charms they are the imps that rule the wave yet trust thee in thy single might if thy heart be pure and thy spirit right thou shalt win the warlock fight if the spray be gem be won the stain of thy wing is washed away, but another errand must be done ere thy crime be lost for a. Thy flamewood lamp is quenched and dark, thou must reillume its spark. Mount thy steed and spur him high to the heaven's blue canopy, and when thou seest a shooting star, follow it fast and follow it far. The last faint spark of its burning train shall light the elfin lamp again thou hast heard our sentence fay hence to the waterside away the goblin marked his monarch well he spake not but he bowed him low then plucked a crimson colon bell and turned him round in act to go the way is long he cannot fly his soiled wing has lost its power and he winds adown the mountain high for many a sore and weary hour. Through dreary beds of tangled fern, through groves of nightshade dark and dern, over the grass and through the brake, where toils the ant and sleeps the snake. Now, o'er the violet's azure flush, he skips along in lightsome mood, and now he threads the bramble bush, till its points are dyed in fairy blood. He has leaped the bog, he has pierced the briar, he has swum the brook and waded the mire, till his spirit sank and his limbs grew weak and the red waxed fainter in his cheek. He had fallen to the ground at right, for rugged and dim was his onward track. 
but there came a spotted toad in sight and he laughed as he jumped upon her back he bridled her mouth with a silkweed twist he lashed her side with an osier thong and now through evening's dewy mist with leap and spring they bound along till the mountain's magic verge is passed and the beach of sand is reached at last soft and pale as the moony beam moveless still the glassy stream the wave is clear the beach is bright with snowy shells and sparkling stones the shore surge comes in ripples light in murmurings faint and distant moans and ever afar in the silence deep is heard the splash of the sturgeon's leap and the bend of his graceful bow is seen a glittering arch of silver sheen spanning the wave of burnished blue and dripping with gems of the river dew the elfin cast a glance around as he lighted down from his courser toad then wound his breast his wings he wound and close to the river's brink he strode he sprang on a rock he breathed a prayer above his head his arms he threw then tossed a tiny curve in air and headlong plunged in waters blue up sprung the spirits of the waves from the sea silk beds in their coral caves with snail plate armour snatched in haste they speed their way through the liquid waste some are rapidly borne along of the mailed shrimp or the prickly prong some on the blood-red leeches glide some on the bony starfish ride some on the back of the lancing squab some on the sidling soldier crab and some on the jellied quaw that flings at once a thousand streamy stings they cut the wave with the living oar and hurry on to the moonlight shore to guard their realms and chase away the footsteps of the invading fay fearlessly he skims along his hope is high and his limbs are strong he spreads his arms like the swallow's wing and throws his feet with a frog-like fling his locks of gold and the waters shine at his breast the tiny foam bees rise his back gleams bright above the brine and the wake line foam behind him lies but the water sprites are gathering near to check his course along the tide their warriors come in swift career and hem him round on every side on his thigh the leech has fixed his hold the quad's long arms are round him rolled the prickly prong has pierced his skin and the squab has thrown his javelin the gritty star has robbed him raw and the crab has struck with his giant claw he howls with rage and he shrieks with pain he strikes around but his blows are vain hopeless is the unequal fight fairy naught is left but flight he turned him round and fled amain with hurry and dash to the beach again he twisted over from side to side and laid his cheek to the cleaving tide the strokes of his plunging arms are fleet and with all his might he flings his feet but the water sprites are round him still to cross his path and work him ill they bathe the wave before him rise they flung the sea-fire in his eyes and they stunned his ears with a scallop stroke where the porpoise heave and the drumfish croak oh but a weary wight was he when he reached the foot of the dogwood tree gashed and wounded and stiff and sore he laid him down on the sandy shore he blessed the force of the charmed line and he banned the water goblin's spite for he saw around in the sweet moonshine the little wee faces above the brine giggling and laughing with all their might at the piteous hap of the fairy white soon he gathered the balsam dew 
from the sorrel leaf and the henbane bud over each wound the balm he drew and with cobweb lint he staunched the blood the mild west wind was soft and low it cooled the heat of his burning brow and he felt new life in a sinew shoot as he drank the juice of the calamus root and now he treads the fatal shore as fresh and vigorous as before wrapped in musing stands the sprite tis the middle wane of night his task is hard his way is far but he must do his errand right ere dawning mounts her beamy car and roars her chariot wheels of light and vain are the spells of fairyland he must work with a human hand he cast a saddened look around but he felt new joy his bosom swell when glittering on the shadowed ground he saw a purple mussel shell thither he ran and he bent him low he heaved at the stern and he heaved at the bow and he pushed her over the yielding sand till he came to the verge of the haunted land she was as lovely a pleasure boat as ever fairy had paddled in for she glowed with purple paint without and shone with silvery pearl within a sculler's notch in the stern he made and all he shaped with a bootle blade then sprung to his seat with a lightsome leap and launched afar on the calm blue deep the imps of the river yell and rave they had no power above the wave but they heaved the billow before the prow and they dashed the surge against her side and they struck her keel with jerk and blow to the gunwale bent to the rocking tide she wimpled about to the pale moonbeam like a feather that floats on a wind-tossed stream and momently athwart her track the quaw upreared his island back and the fluttering scallop behind would float and patter the water about the boat but he bailed her out with his colon bell and he kept her trimmed with a wary tread while on every side like lightning fell the heavy strokes of his bootle blade onward still he held his way till he came where the column of moonshine lay and saw beneath the surface dim the brown-backed sturgeon slowly swim around him were the goblin train but he sculled with all his might and main and followed where the sturgeon led till he saw him upward point his head then he dropped his paddle blade and held his colon goblet up to catch the drop in its crimson cup with sweeping tail and quivering fin through the wave the sturgeon flew and like the heaven shot javelin he sprung above the waters blue instant as the star fall light he plunged him in the deep again but he left an arch of silver bright the rainbow of the moony main it was a strange and lovely sight to see the puny goblin there he seemed an angel form of light with azure wing and sunny hair throned on a cloud of purple fair circled with blue and edged with white and sitting at the fall of even below the bow of summer heaven a moment and its luster fell but ere it met the billow blue he caught within his crimson bell a droplet of its sparkling dew joy to thee fay thy task is done thy wings are pure for the gem is won cheerly ply thy dripping oar and haste away to the elfin shore he turns and lo on either side the ripples on his path divide and the track o'er which his boat must pass is smooth as a sheet of polished glass around their limbs the sea nymphs lave with snowy arms half swelling out while on the glossed and gleamy wave their sea-green ringlets loosely float they swim around with smile and song they press the bark with pearly hand and gently urge her cords along toward the beach of speckled sand and as he lightly leaped to land 
they bade adieu with nod and bow then gaily kissed each little hand and dropped in the crystal deep below a moment stayed the fairy there he kissed the beach and breathed a prayer then spread his wings of gilded blue and on to the elfin court he flew as ever ye saw a bubble rise and shine with a thousand changing dyes till lessening far through ether driven it mingles with the hues of heaven as at the glimpse of morning pale the lance fly spreads his silken sail and gleams with blending soft and bright till lost in the shades of fading night so rose from earth the lovely fay so vanished far in heaven away up fairy quit thy chickweed bower the cricket has called the second hour twice again and the lark will rise to kiss the streaking of the skies up thy charmed armour don thou'lt need it ere the night be gone he put his acorn helmet on it was plumed of the silk of the thistle down the corselet plate that guarded his breast was once the wild bee's golden vest his cloak of a thousand mingled dyes was formed of the wings of butterflies his shield was the shell of a ladybug queen studs of gold on a ground of green and the quivering lance which he brandished bright was the sting of a wasp he had slain in fight swift he bestrode his firefly steed he bared his blade of the bent grass blue he drove his spurs of the cockle seed and away like a glance of thought he flew to skim the heavens and follow far the fiery trail of the rocket star the moth fly as he shot in air crept under the leaf and hid her there the katydid forgot its lay the prowling gnat fled fast away the fell mosquito checked his drone and folded his wings till the fay was gone and the wily beetle dropped his head and fell on the ground as if he were dead they crouched them close in the darksome shade they quaked all over with awe and fear for they had felt the blue bent blade and writhed at the pick of the elfin spear many a time on a summer's night when the sky was clear and the moon was bright they had been roused from the haunted ground by the yelp and bay of the fairy hound they had heard the tiny bugle horn they had heard the twang of the may silk string when the vine twig boughs were tightly drawn and a needle shaft through air was borne feathered with down of the humbird's wing and now they deemed the curia ove some hunter sprite of the elfin ground and they watched till they saw him mount the roof that canopies the world around then glad they left their covert lair and freaked about in the midnight air up to the vaulted firmament his path the firefly courser bent and at every gallop on the wind he flung a glittering spark behind he flies like a feather in the blast till the first light cloud in heaven is past but the shapes of air have begun their work and a drizzly mist is round him cast he cannot see through the mantle murk he shivers with cold but he urges fast through storm and darkness sleet and shade he lashes his steed and spurs amain for shadowy hands have twitched the rein and flame-shot tongues around him played and near him many a fiendish eye glared with a fell malignity and yells of rage and shrieks of fear came screaming on his startled ear his wings are wet around his breast the plume hangs dripping from his crest his eyes are blurred with the lightning's glare and his ears are stunned with the thunder's blare but he gave a shout and his blade he drew he thrust before and he struck behind till he pierced their cloudy bodies through and gashed their shadowy limbs of wind howling the misty spectres flew they ran the air with frightful cries for he has gained the welkin blue and the land of clouds beneath him lies up to the cope careering swift 
in breathless motion fast fleet as the swallow cuts the drift or the sea rock rides the blast the sapphire sheet of eve is shot the spherid moon is past the earth but seems a tiny blot on a sheet of azure cast oh it was sweet in the clear moonlight to tread the starry plain of even to meet the thousand eyes of night and feel the cooling breath of heaven but the elfin made no stop or stay till he came to the bank of the milky way then he checked his course's foot and watched for the glimpse of the planet shoot sudden along the snowy tide that swelled to meet their footsteps fall the sylphs of heaven were seen to glide attired in sunset's crimson pool around the fay they weave the dance they skip before him on the plain and one has taken his wasp sting lance and one upholds his bridle rein with warblings wild they lead him on to where through clouds of amber seen stud with stars resplendent shone the palace of the sylphid queen its spiral columns gleaming bright with streamers of the northern light its curtains light and lovely flush was of the morning's rosy blush and the ceiling fair that rose a boon the white and feathery fleece of noon but oh how fair the shape that lay beneath a rainbow bending bright she seemed the entranced fay the loveliest of the forms of light her mantle was the purple rolled at twilight in the west afar it was tied with threads of dawning gold and buttoned with a sparkling star her face was like the lily rune that veils the vestal planet's hue her eyes two beamlets from the moon set floating in the welcome blue her hair is like the sunny beam and the diamond gems which round it gleam are the pure drops of dewy even that ne'er have left their native heaven she raised her eyes to the wandering sprite and they leaped with smiles for well i ween never before in the bowers of light had the form of an earthly fay been seen long she looked in his tiny face long with his butterfly cloak she played she smoothed his wings of azure lace and handled the tassel of his blade and as he told in accents low the story of his love and woe she felt new pains in her bosom rise and the tear-drop started in her eyes and oh sweet spirit of the earth she cried return no more to your woodland height but ever here with me abide in the land of everlasting light within the fleecy drift we'll lie we'll hang upon the rainbow's rim and all the jewels of the sky around thy brow shall brightly beam and thou shalt bathe thee in the stream that rolls its whitening foam a boon and ride upon the lightning's gleam and dance upon the orbit moon we'll sit within the pleiad ring we'll rest on orion's starry belt and i will bid my sylphs to sing the song that makes the dew mist melt their harps are of the umber shade that hides the blush of waking day and every gleamy string is made of silvery moonshine's lengthened ray and thou shalt pillow on my breast while heavenly breathings float around and with the sylphs of ether blest forget the joys of fairy ground she was lovely and fair to see and the elfin's heart beat fitfully but lovelier far and still more fair the earthly form imprinted there naught he saw in the heavens above was half so dear as his mortal love for he thought upon her lock so meek and he thought of the light flush on her cheek never again might he bask and lie on that sweet cheek and moonlight eye but in his dreams her form to see to clasp her in his reverie to think upon his virgin bride was worth all heaven and earth beside lady he cried i have sworn to-night on the word of a fairy knight 
to do my sentence task aright my honour scarce is free from stain i may not soil its snows again betide me weal betide me woe its mandate must be answered now her bosom heaved with many a sigh the tear was in her drooping eye but she led him to the palace gate and called the sylphs who hovered there and bade them fly and bring him straight if clouds condensed a sable car with charm and spell she blessed it there from all the fiends of upper air then round him cast the shadowy shroud and tied his steed behind the cloud and pressed his hand as she bade him fly far to the verge of the northern sky for by its wane and wavering light there was a star would fall to-night borne afar on the wings of the blast northward away he speeds him fast and his courser follows the cloudy wane till the hoof strokes fall like pattering rain the clouds roll backward as he flies each flickering star behind him lies and he has reached the northern plain and backed his far flood steed again ready to follow in its flight the streaming of the rocket light the star is yet in the vault of heaven but it rocks in the summer gale and now tis fitful and uneven and now tis deadly pale and now tis wrapped in sulphur smoke and quenched is its rayless beam and now with a rattling thunderstroke it bursts in flash and flame as swift as the glance of the arrowy lance that the storm spirit flings from high the star shot flew o'er the welkin blue as it fell from the sheeted sky as swift as the wind in its train behind the elfin gallops along the fiends of the clouds are bellowing loud but the sylphid charm is strong he gallops on hurt in the shower of fire while the cloud fiends fly from the blaze he watches each flake till its sparks expire and rides in the light of its rays but he drove his steed to the lightning speed and caught a glimmering spark then wheeled around to the fairy ground and sped through the midnight dark oaf and goblin imp and sprite elf of eve and starry fay ye that love the moon's soft light hither hither wend your way twine ye in a jocund ring sing and trip it merrily hand to hand and wing to wing round the wild witch hazel tree heal the wanderer again with dance and song and lute and lyre pure his wing and strong his chain and doubly bright his fairy fire twine ye in an airy round brush the dew and print the lee skip and gamble hop and bound round the wild witch hazel tree the beetle guards our holy ground he flies about the haunted place and if mortal there be found he hums in his ears and flaps his face the leaf hop sounds all round away the owlet's eyes are lanterns be thus we sing and dance and play round the wild witch hazel tree but hark from tower to tree top high the sentry elf his call has made a streak is in the eastern sky shapes of moonlight flit and fade the hilltops gleam in morning spring the skylark shakes his dappled wing the day glimpse glimmers on the lawn the cock is crowed and the fays are gone end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh where do fairies hide their heads by thomas haynes bailey from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for LibriVox.org by leanne yao oh where do fairies hide their heads oh where do fairies hide their heads when snow lies on the hills when frost has spoiled their mossy beds and crystallized their rills beneath the moon they cannot trip in circles o'er the plain and draughts of dew they cannot sip till green leaves come again perhaps in small blue diving bells they plunge beneath the waves inhabiting the wreathed shells that lie in coral caves 
perhaps in red Vesuvius, carousels they maintain, and cheer their little spirits thus, till green leaves come again. When they return, there will be mirth and music in the air, and fairy wings upon the earth, and mischief everywhere. The maids, to keep the elves aloof, will bar the doors in vain. No keyhole will be fairy-proof when green leaves come again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs of Ariel from The Tempest, Act One, Scene Two, by William Shakespeare. From The World's Best Poetry, Volume Six, Fancy and Sentiment, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Songs of Ariel from The Tempest, Act One, Scene Two. Song One. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands. Curtsied when you have then kissed the wild waves whist. Footed featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burthen bear. Hark, hark, burthen dispersedly. Bow, wow! The watchdogs bark, burthen dispersedly. Bow, wow! Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting chanticleer. Cry cock a diddle dove. Song two. Full fathom five, thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his knell. Burthen, ding dong. Hark, now I hear them. Ding dong bell. Song three, from Act Five, Scene One. Where the bee sucks, there suck I, in a cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry, on the bat's back I do fly, after summer merrily. Merrily, merrily shall I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Airy Nothings from The Tempest, Act 4, Scene 1, by William Shakespeare. From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Airy Nothings our revels now are ended these are actors as i foretold you were all spirits and are melted into air into thin air and like the baseless fabric of this vision the cloud-capped towers the gorgeous palaces the solemn temples the great globe itself yea all which it inherit shall dissolve and like this insubstantial pageant faded leave not a rack behind we are such stuff as dreams are made on 
and our little life is rounded with a sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Earl King by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Translated from German by Martin and Aetun From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator Craig Franklin as the father Sonia as the child And Thomas Peter as the Elfin King The Earl King who rides so late through the midnight blast tis a father spurs on with his child full fast he gathers the boy well into his arm he clasps him close and he keeps him warm my son why thus to my arm dost cling father dost thou not see the elfin king the elfin king with his crown and train my son tis a streak of the misty rain come hither thou darling come go with me fine games i know that i'll play with thee flowers many and bright to my kingdom's hold my mother has many a robe of gold O oh, father, dear father, and dost thou not hear what the elfin king whispers so low in mine ear? Calm, calm thee, my boy, it is only the breeze as it rustles the withered leaves under the trees. Wilt thou go, bonny boy, wilt thou go with me? my daughter shall wait on thee daintily my daughters are round thee and dance shall sweep and rock thee and kiss thee and sing thee to sleep o oh, father dear father and dost thou not mark the elf king's daughters move by in the dark i see it my child but it is not they Tis the old willow nodding its head so grey. I love thee, thy beauty, it charms me so. And I'll take thee by force if thou wilt not go. Oh, father, dear father, he's grasping me. My heart is as cold as cold can be. The father rides swiftly, with terror he gasps, the sobbing child in his arm he clasps. He reaches the castle with spurring and dread, but alack, in his arms the child lay dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Jinns by Victor Hugo Translated from the French from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the jinns town tower shore deep where lower cliffs steep waves grey where play winds gay all sleep hark a sound far and slight breathes around on the night high and higher nigh and nigher like a fire roaring bright now on it is sweeping with rattling beat like dwarf imp leaping in gallop fleet he flies he prances in frolic fancies on wave crest dances with pattering feet hark the rising swell with each nearer burst like the toll of bell of a convent cursed like the billowy roar on a storm-lashed shore now hushed now once more maddening to its worst o oh god the deadly sound of the jinn's fearful cry quick neath the spiral round of the deep staircase fly see see our lamplight fade 
and of the balustrade mounts mounts the circling shade up to the ceiling high tis the jinn's wild streaming swarm whistling in their tempest flight snap the tall yews neath the storm like a pine flame crackling bright swift and heavy lo their crowd through the heavens rushing loud like a livid thunder-cloud with its bolt of fiery night ha they are on us close without shut tight the shelter where we lie with hideous din the monster rout dragon and vampire fill the sky the loosened rafter overhead trembles and bends like quivering reed shakes the old door with shuddering dread as from its rusty hinge would fly wild cries of hell voices that howl and shriek the horrid swarm before the tempest tossed o oh, heaven descends my lowly roof to seek bends the strong wall beneath the furious host totters the house as though like dry leaves shorn from autumn bough and on the mad blast borne up from its deep foundations it were torn to join the stormy whirl ah all is lost o prophet if thy hand but now save from these foul and hellish things a pilgrim at thy shrine i'll bow laden with pious offerings bid their hot breath its fiery rain stream on my faithful door in vain vainly upon my blackened pane grate the fierce claws of their dark wings they have passed and their wild legion cease to thunder at my door fleeting through night's rayless region hither they return no more clanking chains and sounds of woe fill the forests as they go and the tall oaks cower low bend their flaming flight before on on the storm of wings bears far the fiery fear till scarce the breeze now brings dim murmurings to the ear like locusts humming hail or thresh of tiny flail plied by the pattering hail on some old roof-tree near fainter now are borne fitful muttering still as when arab horn swells its magic peal shoreward over the deep fairy voices sweep and the infant sleep golden visions fill each deadly djinn dark child of fright of death and sin speeds the wild flight hark the dull moan like the deep tone of ocean's groan afar by night more and more fades it now as on shore ripples flow as the plaint far and faint of a saint murmured low hark hissed around i list the bounds of space all trace a face of sound end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Lady Lost in the Wood From Comus By Milton From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 6 Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao The Lady Lost in the Wood the lady this way the noise was if mine ear be true my best guide now methought it was the sound of riot and ill-managed merriment such as the jocund flute or games and pipe stirs up amongst the loose unlettered hinds when for their teeming flocks and granges fall in wanton dance they praise the bounteous pan and thank the gods amiss I should be low to meet the rudeness and swilled insolence of such late wassailers. Yet, oh, where else shall I inform my unacquainted feet in the blind mazes of this tangled wood? My brothers, when they saw me wearied out with this long way, resolving here to lodge under the spreading favour of these pines, stepped, as they said, to the next thicket side to bring me berries, 
or such cooling fruit as the kind hospitable woods provide they left me then when the grey-headed even like a sad votarist in palmer's weed rose from the hindmost wheels of phoebus's wain but where they are and why they came not back is now the labour of my thoughts tis likeliest they had engaged their wandering steps too far and envious darkness ere they could return has stole them from me else o oh thievish knight why shouldst thou but for some felonious end in thy dark lantern thus close up the stars that nature hung in heaven and filled their lamps with everlasting oil to give due light to the misled and lonely traveller this is the place as well as i may guess whence even now the tumult of loud mirth was rife and perfect in my listening ear yet naught but single darkness do i find what might this be a thousand fantasies begin to throng into my memory of calling shapes and beckoning shadows dire and airy tongues that syllable men's names on sands and shores and desert wildernesses these thoughts may startle well but not astound the virtuous mind that ever walks attended by a strong siding champion conscience o oh, welcome pure-eyed faith white-handed hope thou hovering angel girt with golden wings and thou unblemished fool with chastity i see you visibly and now believe that he the supreme good to whom all things ill are but a slavish offices of vengeance would send a glistering guardian if need were to keep my life and honour unassailed was i deceived or did a sable cloud turn forth her silver lining on the night i did not err there does a sable cloud turn forth her silver lining on the night and casts a gleam over this tufted grove i cannot hello to my brothers but such noise as i can make to be heard farthest i'll venture for my new enlivened spirits prompt me and they perhaps are not far off end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Nymph of the Severn by John Milton from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator, Thomas Peter as the spirit, and Lian Yao as Sabrina. The Nymph of the Severn from Comus. There is a gentle nymph not far from hence, that with moist curb sways the smooth severn stream sabrina is her name a virgin pure with whom she was a daughter of locrine that had the sceptre from his father brute she guiltless damsel flying the mad pursuit of her enraged stepdame gwendolen commended her fair innocence to the flood that stayed her flight with his cross-flowing course the water-nymphs that in the bottom played held up their pearled wrists and took her in bearing her straight to aged nereus's hall who piteous of her woes reared her lank head and gave her to his daughters to embathe in nectared lavers strewed with asphodel and through the porch and inlet of each sense dropped in ambrosial oils till she revived and underwent a quick immortal change made goddess of the river still she retains her maiden gentleness and oft at eve visits the herds along the twilight meadows helping all urchin blasts and ill luck signs that the shrewd meddling elf delights to make which she with precious vile liquors heals, for which the shepherds and their festivals carol her goodness loud in rustic lays, and throw sweet garland wreaths into her stream of pansies, pinks, and gaudy daffodils. And, as the old swain said, she can unlock the clasping charm and thaw the mumming spell 
if she be right invoked in warbled song for maidenhood she loves and will be swift to aid a virgin such as was herself in hard besetting need this will i try and add the power of some adjuring verse song sabrina fair listen where thou art sitting under the glassy cool translucent wave in twisted braids of lilies knitting the loose train of thy amber dropping hair listen for dear honour's sake goddess of the silver lake listen and save listen and appear to us in name of great oceanus by the earth-shaking neptune's maze and telly's grave majestic pace by hoary nereus wrinkled look and the carpathian wizard's hook by scaly triton's winding shell and old soothsaying glaucus spell by leucothea's lovely hands and her son that rules the strands by thetis tinsel slippered feet and the songs of sirens sweet by dead parthenope's dear tomb and fair lygia's golden comb wherewith she sits on diamond rocks sleeking her soft alluring locks by all the nymphs that nightly dance upon thy streams with wily glance rise rise and heave thy rosy head from thy coral paven bed and bridle in thy headlong wave till thou our summons answered have listen and save sabrina rises attended by water nymphs and sings by the rushy fringed bank where grows the willow and the osier dank my sliding chariot stays thick set with agate and the azure sheen of turquoise blue and emerald green that in the channel strays whilst from off the waters fleet thus i set my printless feet o'er the cowslip's velvet head that bends not as i tread gentle swain at thy request i am here goddess dear we implore thy powerful hand to undo the charmed band of true virgin here distressed through the force and through the wile of unblessed enchanter vile shepherd tis my office best to help ensnare chastity brightest lady look on me thus i sprinkle on thy breast drops that from my fountain pure i have kept of precious cure thrice upon thy finger's tip thrice upon thy rubied lip next this marble venom seat smeared with gums of glutinous heat i touch with chaste palms moist and cold now the spell hath lost his hold and i must haste ere morning hour to wait in amphitrite's bower sabrina descends and the lady rises out of her seat virgin daughter of lucrine sprung from old anchises line may thy brim and waves for this their full tribute never miss from a thousand petty rills that tumble down the snowy hills summer drought or singed air never scorch thy tresses fair no wet october's torrent flood thy molten crystal fill with mud may thy billows roll ashore the barrel and the golden ore may thy lofty head be crowned with many a tower and terrace round and here and there thy banks upon with groves of myrrh and cinnamon come lady while heaven lends us grace 
let us fly this cursed place lest the sorcerer us entice with some other new device not a waste or needless sound till we come to holier ground i shall be your faithful guide through this gloomy covert wide and not many furlongs thence is your father's residence where this night are met in state many a friend to gratulate his wish presence and beside all the swains that near abide with jigs and rural dance resort we shall catch them at their sport and our sudden coming there will double all their mirth and cheer come let us haste the stars grow high but night sits monarch yet in the mid sky end of poem this recording is in the public domain tam o'shanter a tale by robert burns from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for librivox dot org by sonia tam o'shanter a tale of brownies and of bogeleys full is this booker gavin douglas when chapman billies leave the street and draughty neighbors neighbors meet as market days are wearing late and folk begin to take the gate while we sit bosing at the nappy and getting foe and unco happy we think na on the lung scot smiles the mosses waters slaps and styles that lie between us and our ham where sits our sulky sullen dam gathering her brows like gathering storm nursing her wrath to keep it warm this truth fand honest tam o'shanter as he fra ayr a night did canter old ayr whom never a town surpasses for honest men and bonny lasses o oh, tam hadst thou been but so wise as tain thy ain wife kate's advice she told thee weel thou wast a skellum a blithering blustering drunken blellum that fra november till october a market day thou wast na sober that ilka melder wi the miller thou said as lang as thou had siller that every nay was ca the shoe on the smith and thee got roaring fo on that at the lord's house even on sunday thou drank with curtain jean till monday she prophesied that late or soon thou would be found deep drowned in dune or catched with warlocks in the murk by alloway's old haunted kirk ah gentle dames it gars me greet to think how mony counsel sweet how mony lengthened sage advices the husband frau the wife despises but to our tale our market night tam had got planted on right fast by an ingle blazing finely with weeming swats that drank divinely and at his elbow so the johnny his ancient trusty droughty crony tam loved him like a vera brither they had been foe for weeks together the night drave on with sangs and clatter and aye the ale was growing better the landlady and tam grew gracious with favours secret sweet and precious the soldier told his queerest stories the landlord's laugh was ready chorus the storm without might rear and rustle tam didn't mind the storm or whistle care mad to see a man so happy e'en drowned himself among the nappy as bees flee hame with lades of treasure the minutes winged their way with pleasure kings may be blessed but tam was glorious over all the ills of life victorious but pleasures are like poppies spread you seize the flower its bloom is shed or like the snowfall in the river a moment white then melts forever or like the borealis rays that flit ere you can point their place or like the rainbow's lovely form evanishing amid the storm 
nay man can tether time or tide the hour approaches tam on ride that hour a night's black arch the keystain that dreary hour he mounts his beastain and sich a night he takes the road in as never poor sinner was abroad in the wind blew as twat blown its last the rattling showers rose on the blast the speedy gleams the darkness swallowed loud deep and lang the thunder bellowed that night a child might understand the devil had business on his hand weel mounted on his grey mare meg a better never lifted leg tam scalped on through dub and mire despising wind and rain and fire whilst holding fast his good blue bonnet whilst crooning over some old scots sonnet whilst glowing round with prudent cares lest bogles catch him unawares kirk alloway was drawing nigh where ghosts and holders nightly cry by this time he was crossed the ford where in the snow the chapman smored and past the bergs and makel stain where drunken charlie breaks neck bane and through the winds and by the cairn where hunters fund the murdered bairn and near the thorn aboon the well where mungo's mither hanged her cell before him doon pours all his floods the doubling storm rose through the woods the lightnings flash from pole to pole near and more near the thunders roll when glimmering through the groaning trees kirk alloway seemed in a bleeze through ilka bore the beams were glancing and loud resounded mirth and dancing inspiring bold john barleycorn what dangers thou canst make us scorn with tippany we fear my evil with us we will face the devil the swat so reamed in tammy's noddle fair play he cared not dale's a bottle but maggie stood right sair astonished till by the heel and hand admonished she ventured forward on the light and wow tam saw an unco sight warlocks and witches in a dance na cotillion brand new for france but hornpipes jigs strathspeys and reels put life and metal in their heels a winnock bunker in the east there sat old nick in shape of beast a towsy tyke black grim and large to give a music was his charge he screwed the pipes and guard them skirl till roof and rafters all did dull coffins stood round like open presses that showed the dead in their last dresses and by some devilish cantrip slate each in its cold hand held a light by which heroic tam was able to note upon the haley table a murderous bane's in gibbet airns twa spanlang we unchristened bairns a thief new cut it fro a rape with his last gasp his gab did gape five tomahawks with blood red rusted five scimitars with murder crusted a garter which a babe had strangled a knife a father's throat had mangled whom his ain son of life bereft the grey hairs yet stack to the heft three lawyers tongues turned inside out with lies seemed like a beggar's clout and priests hearts rotten black as muck lay stinking vile in every nook with mere horrible and awful which even to name what be unlawful as tammy glowered amazed and curious the mirth and fun grew fast and furious the piper loud and louder blew the dancers quick and quicker flew they reeled they sat they crossed they clicked till ilka carlin swat and reeked and cost her duddies to the work and link it at it in her sark now tam o oh, tam had they been queens a plump and strapping in their teens their sarks instead of crishy flannen been snow white seventeen hundred linen their breeks o' mine my only pair that ants were plush o guide blue hair i would a given them off my herdies for a bling o the bonnie's birdies but withered beldams old and droll rig woody hags what's been a foal 
loping and flinging on a crummock i wonder didn't a turn thy stomach but tom kent what was what foo brawly there was a winsome wench and wally that night enlisted in the corps lang after kent on carrick's shore for mony a beast to dead she shot and perished mony a bonny boat and shook baith makel corn and bear and kept the countryside in fear her cutty sark of paisley harn that while a lassie she had worn in longitude though sorely scanty it was her best and she was vaunty a ah, little ken thy reverend granny that sark she coughed for her wee nanny with twa pun scots twas all her riches what ever graced a dance of witches but here my muse her wing moan cower sich flights are far beyond her power to sing how nanny lap and flang a supple jade she was and strang and how tam stood like an bewitched and thought his very een enriched even satan glowered and fidged full fain and hotched and blew with might and main till first a caper sign another tam tint his reason all together and roars out well done cutty sark and in an instant all was dark and scarcely had he maggie rallied when out the hellish legion sallied as bees biz out with angry fike when plundering herds assail their bike as open pussies mortal foes when pop she starts before their nose as eager runs the market crowd when catch the thief resounds aloud so maggie runs the witches follow with money and eldritch screech and hollow oh tam o oh, tam thou get thy fairin in hell they'll roast thee like a herrin in vain thy kate awaits thy coming kate soon will be a woeful woman now do thy speedy utmost meg and win the key stain of the brig there at them thou thy tail may toss a running stream they dare na cross but ere the key stain she could make the fiend that tail she had to shake for nanny far before the rest hard upon noble maggie pressed and flew at tom with furious ettle but little wist she maggie's mettle a spring brought aff her master hail but left behind her ain grey tail the carlin clout her by the rump and left poor maggie scarce a stump now who this tale o truth shall read ilk man and mother's son take heed whenever to drink you are inclined or cutty sarks run in your mind think ye may buy the joys over dear remember tam o' shanter's mare end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lorelei by heinrich hein translated from german from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the lorelei i know not whence it rises this thought so full of woe but a tale of times departed haunts me and will not go the air is cool and it darkens and calmly flows the rhine the mountain peaks are sparkling in the sunny evening shine and yonder sits a maiden the fairest of the fair with gold is her garment glittering and she combs her golden hair with a golden comb she combs it and a wild song singeth she that melts the heart with a wondrous and powerful melody the boatman feels his bosom with a nameless longing move he sees not the gulfs before him his gaze is fixed above till over boat and boatman the rhine's deep waters run and this with her magic singing the lorelei hath done heinrich hein end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fisher by johann wolfgang von goethe translated from german by charles timothy brooks from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator and the Yan Yao as the maid. 
the fisher the waters purled the waters swelled a fisher sat near by and earnestly his line beheld with tranquil heart and eye and while he sits and watches there he sees the waves divide and lo a maid with glistening hair springs from the troubled tide she sang to him she spake to him why lurst thou from below in cruel mood my tender brood to die in day's fierce glow ah didst thou know how sweetly there the little fishes dwell thou wouldst come down their lot to share and be for ever well bathes not the smiling sun at night the moon too in the waves comes he not forth more fresh and bright from ocean's cooling caves canst thou unmoved that deep world see that heaven of tranquil blue where thine own face is beckoning thee down to the eternal dew the waters purled the waters swelled they kissed his naked feet his heart a nameless transport held as if his love did greet she spake to him she sang to him then all with him was all half drew she him half sank he in he sank to rise no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain the siren song by william brown from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao the siren song from the inner temple mask steer hither steer your winged pines all beaten mariners here lie undiscovered mines a prey to passengers perfumes far sweeter than the best that make the phoenix urn and nest fear not your ships nor any to oppose you save our lips but come on shore where no joy dies till love has gotten more for swelling waves are panting breasts where never storms arise exchange and be a while our guests for stars gaze on our eyes the compass love shall hourly sing and as he goes about the ring we will not miss to tell each point he nameth with a kiss end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Forsaken Merman by Matthew Arnold from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the Merman, Sonia as the Children, and Leanne Yao as Margaret. The Forsaken Merman Come, dear children, let us away, down and away below. Now my brothers call from the bay now the great winds shorewards blow now the salt tides seaward flow now the wild white horses play champ and chaff and toss in the spray children dear let us away this way this way call her once before you go call once yet in a voice that she will know margaret margaret children's voices should be dear Call once more to a mother's ear, Children's voices wild with pain, Surely she will come again. Call her once, and come away, This way, this way. Mother dear, we cannot stay, The wild white horses foam and fret, Margaret, Margaret. Come, dear children, come away down, Call no more. One last look at the white wall town, and the little grey church on the windy shore then come down she will not come though you call all day come away come away children dear was it yesterday we heard the sweet bells over the bay in the caverns where we lay through the surf and through the swell the far-off sound of a silver bell sand-strewn caverns cool and deep 
where the winds are all asleep where the spent lights quiver and gleam where the salt weed sways in the stream where the sea beasts ranged all round feed in the ooze of their pasture ground where the sea snakes coil and twine dry their mail and bask in the brine where the great whales come sailing by sail and sail with unshut eye round the world for ever and i when did music come this way children dear was it yesterday children dear was it yesterday call yet once that she went away once she sat with you and me on a red gold throne in the heart of the sea and the youngest sat on her knee she combed its bright hair and she tended it well when down swung the sound of the far-off bell she sighed she looked up through the clear green sea she said i must go for my kinsfolk play in the little grey church on the shore to-day twill be easter time in the world oh me and i lose my poor soul merman here with thee i said go up dear heart through the waves say thy prayer and come back to the kind sea caves she smiled she went up through the surf in the bay children dear was it yesterday children dear were we long alone the sea grows stormy the little ones moan long prayers i said in the world they say come i said and we rose through the surf in the bay we went up the beach in the sandy down where the sea stocks bloom to the white-walled town through the narrow paved streets where all was still to the little grey church on the windy hill from the church came a murmur of folk at their prayers but we stood without in the cold blowing airs we climbed on the graves on the stones worn with rains and we gazed up the aisle through the small leaded panes she sat by the pillar we saw her clear margaret hissed come quick we are here dear heart i said we are here alone the sea grows stormy the little ones moan but ah she gave me never a look for her eyes were sealed to the holy book loud prays the priest shut stands the door come away children call no more come away come down call no more down 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 to the depths of the sea she sits at her wheel in the humming town singing most joyfully hark what she sings o oh joy o oh joy from the humming street and the child with his toy from the priest and the bell and the holy well from the wheel where i spun and the blessed light of the sun and so she sings her fill singing most joyfully till the shuttle falls from her hand and the whizzing wheel stands still she steals to the window and looks at the sand and over the sand at the sea and her eyes are set in a stare and anon there breaks a sigh and anon there drops a tear from a sorrow clouded eye and a heart sorrow laden a long long sigh for the cold strange eyes of a little mermaiden and the gleam of her golden hair come away away children come children come down the hoarse wind blows colder lights shine in the town she will start from her slumber when gusts shake the door she will hear the winds howling will hear the waves roar we shall see while above us the waves roar and whirl a ceiling of amber a pavement of pearl singing here came a mortal but faithless was she and alone dwell for ever the kings of the sea but children at midnight when soft the winds blow when clear falls the moonlight when spring tides are low when sweet air comes seaward from heaths starred with broom and high rocks throw mildly on the blanched sands a gloom up the still glistening beaches up the creeks we will hie over banks of bright seaweed 
the ebb tide's leaves dry we will gaze from the sand hills at the white sleeping town at the church on the hillside and then come back down singing there dwells a loved one but cruel is she she left lonely for ever the kings of the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain the flitting of the fairies from the end of elfintown by jane barlow from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for LibriVox.org by leanne yao the flitting of the fairies for this holds true too true alas the sky that eve was clear as glass yet no man saw the fairies pass whereas your pathways glisten and true it is too true i me that never more on lawn or lea shall mortal man a fairy see though long he look and listen only the twilight woods among a wild-winged breeze hath sometimes flung dim echoes born from strain soft sung behind sky reaches hollow still further fainter up the height receding past the deep zoned night far chant of fays who lead that flight faint call of fays who follow end of poem this recording is in the public domain a musical instrument by elizabeth barrett browning from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator and lian yao as pan a musical instrument what was he doing the great god pan down in the reeds by the river spreading ruin and scattering ben splashing and paddling with hoofs of a goat and breaking the golden lilies afloat with the dragonfly on the river he tore out a reed the great god pan from the deep cool bed of the river the limpid water turbidly ran and the broken lilies a dying lay and the dragonfly had fled away ere he brought it out of the river high on the shore sat the great god pan while turbidly flowed the river and hecked and hewed as a great god can with his hard bleak steel at the patient reed till there was not a sign of a leaf indeed to prove it fresh from the river he cut it short did the great god pan how tall it stood in the river then drew the pith like the heart of a man steadily from the outside ring then notched the poor dry empty thing in holes as he sate by the river this is the way laughed the great god pan laughed while he sate by the river the only way since gods began to make sweet music they could succeed then dropping his mouth to a hole in the reed he blew in power by the river sweet 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 o pan piercing sweet by the river blinding sweet o great god pan the sun on the hill forgot to die and the lilies revived and the dragonfly came back to dream on the river yet half a beast is the great god pan to laugh as he sits by the river making a poet out of a man the true god sigh for the cost and the pain for the reed that grows never more again as a reed with the reeds of the river end of poem this recording is in the public domain a transformation by ovid translated from the latin by henry king from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter as the narrator and jason in panama as the boy a transformation from the metamorphoses 
weary and travel-worn, her lips unwet with water, at a straw-thatched cottage door the wanderer knocked. An ancient crone came forth and saw her need, and hospitable brought her bowl of barley broth and bade her drink. Thankful she raised it, but a graceless boy and impudent stood by, and, ere the half was drained, Ha ha! See how the glutton swills! With insolent jeer he cried. The goddess's ire was roused, and as he spoke, what liquor yet the bowl retained, full in his face she dashed. His cheeks broke out in blotches, what were arms turned legs, and from the shortened trunk a tail tapered behind. Small mischief evermore might that small body work. The lizard's self was larger now than he. With terror shrieked the crone, and weeping, stooped her altered child to raise. The little monster fled her grasp and wriggled into hiding. Still his name his nature tells, and from the starlight spots that mark him, known as Stelio crawls the newt. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Comet, October 1858, by Charles Sangster. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. The Comet. Erratic soul of some great purpose, doomed to track the wild illimitable space till sure propitiation has been made for the divine commission unperformed what was thy crime a hazardous curse were not more stern on earth than thine in heaven art thou the spirit of some angel world for grave rebellion banished from thy peers compelled to watch the calm immortal stars circling in rapture the celestial void while the avenger follows in thy train to spur thee on to wretchedness etern or one of nature's wildest fantasies from which she flies in terror so profound and with such whirl of torment in her breast that mighty earthquakes yawn where'er she treads while war makes red its terrible right hand and famine stalks abroad all lean and wan to us to us thou art as exquisitely fair as the ideal visions of the seer or gentlest fancy that e'er floated down imagination's bright and ruffled stream wedding the thought that was too deep for words to the low breathings of inspired song when the stars sung together o'er the birth of the poor babe at bethlehem that lay in the coarse manger at the crowded inn didst thou perhaps a bright exalted star refuse to swell the grand harmonious lay jealous as herod of the birth divine or when the crowns of thorns on calvary pierced the redeemer's brow didst thou disdain to weep when all the planetary worlds were blinded by the fullness of their tears e'en to the flaming sun that hid his face at the loud cry lama sabachthani no rest no rest the very damned have that in the dark councils of remotest hell where the dread scheme was perfected that sealed thy disobedience and accruing doom like adam's sons hast thou too forfeited the blessed repose that never pillowed sin no none can tell thy fate thou wandering sphinx pale science searching by the midnight lamp through the vexed mazes of the human brain still fails to read the secret of its soul as the superb enigma flashes by a loosed prometheus burning with disdain end of recording this poem is in the public domain the ballad of judas iscariot by robert buchanan from the world's best poetry volume six 
fancy and sentiment part one read for LibriVox.org by sonia as the narrator thomas peter as judas iscariot jason in panama as the bridegroom and craig franklin as the wedding guest the ballad of judas iscariot twas the body of judas iscariot lay in the field of blood twas the soul of judas iscariot beside the body stood black was the earth by night and black was the sky black black were the broken clouds though the red moon went by twas the body of judas iscariot strangled and dead lay there twas the soul of judas iscariot looked on it in despair the breath of the world came and went like a sick man's in rest drop by drop on the world's eyes the dews fell cool and blessed then the soul of judas iscariot did make a gentle moan i will bury underneath the ground my flesh and blood and bone i will bury deep beneath the soil lest mortals look thereon and when the wolf and raven come the body will be gone the stones of the field are sharp as steel and hard and bold god what and i must bear my body hence until i find a spot twas the soul of judas iscariot so grim and gaunt and gray raised the body of judas iscariot and carried it away and as he bare it from the field its touch was cold as ice and the ivory teeth within the jaw rattled aloud like dice as the soul of judas iscariot carried its load with pain the eye of heaven like a lanthorn's eye opened and shut again half he walked and half he seemed lifted on the cold wind he did not turn for chilly hands were pushing from behind the first place that he came unto it was the open wold and underneath were prickly winds and a wind that blew so cold the next place that he came unto it was a stagnant pool and when he threw the body in it floated light as wool he drew the body on his back and it was dripping chill and the next place that he came unto was a cross upon a hill a cross upon the windy hill and a cross on either side three skeletons that swing thereon who had been crucified and on the middle crossbar sat a white dove slumbering dim it sat in the dim light with its head beneath its wing and underneath the middle cross a grave yawned wide and vast but the soul of judas iscariot shivered and glided past the fourth place that he came unto it was the brig of dread and the great torrents rushing down were deep and swift and red he dared not fling the body in for fear of faces dim and arms were waved in the wild water to thrust it back to him twas the soul of judas iscariot turned from the brig of dread and the dreadful foam of the wild water had splashed the body red for days and nights he wandered on upon an open plain and the days went by like blinding mist and the nights like rushing rain for days and nights he wandered on all through the wood of woe and the nights went by like moaning wind and the days like drifting snow twas the soul of judas iscariot came with a weary face alone alone and all alone alone in a lonely place he wandered east he wandered west and heard no human sound for months and years in grief and tears he wandered round and round for months and years in grief and tears he walked the silent night 
then the soul of judas iscariot perceived a far-off light a far-off light across the waste as dim as dim might be that came and went like a lighthouse gleam on a black night at sea twas the soul of judas iscariot crawled to the distant gleam and the rain came down and the rain was blown against him with a scream for days and nights he wandered on pushed on by hands behind and the days went by like black black rain and the nights like rushing wind twas the soul of judas iscariot strange and sad and tall stood all alone at dead of night before a lighted hall and the wold was white with snow and his footmarks black and damp and the ghost of the silver moon arose holding her yellow lamp and the icicles were on the eaves and the walls were deep with white and the shadows of the guests within passed on the window light the shadows of the wedding guests did strangely come and go and the body of judas iscariot lay stretched along the snow the body of judas iscariot lay stretched along the snow twas the soul of judas iscariot ran swiftly to and fro to and fro and up and down he ran so swiftly there as round and round the frozen pole glided the lean white bear twas the bridegroom sat at the table head and the lights burned bright and clear oh who is that the bridegroom said whose weary feet i hear twas one looked from the lighted hall and answered soft and slow it is a wolf runs up and down with a black track in the snow the bridegroom in his robe of white sat at the table head oh who is that who moans without the blessed bridegroom said twas one looked from the lighted hall and answered fierce and low tis the soul of judas iscariot gliding to and fro twas the soul of judas iscariot did hush itself and stand and saw the bridegroom at the door with a light in his hand the bridegroom stood in the open door and he was clad in white and far within the lord's supper was spread so long and bright the bridegroom shaded his eyes and looked and his face was bright to see what dost thou here at the lord's supper with thy body's sins said he twas the soul of judas iscariot stood black and sad and bare i have wandered many nights and days there is no light elsewhere twas the wedding guests cried out within and their eyes were fierce and bright scourge the soul of judas iscariot away into the night the bridegroom stood in the open door and he waved hands still and slow and the third time that he waved his hands the air was thick with snow and of every flake of falling snow before it touched the ground there came a dove and a thousand doves made sweet sound twas the body of judas iscariot floated away full fleet and the wings of the doves that bear it off were like its winding sheet twas the bridegroom stood at the open door and beckoned smiling sweet twas the soul of judas iscariot stole in and fell at his feet the holy supper is spread within and the many candles shine and i have waited long for thee before i poured the wine the supper wine is poured at last the lights burn bright and fair iscariot washes the bridegroom's feet and dries them with his hair end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Blessed Damosel by Dante Gabriel Rossetti From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6 Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the narrator And Lian Yao 
as the damosel the blessed damosel the blessed damosel leaned out from the gold bar of heaven her eyes were deeper than the depth of waters stilled at even she had three lilies in her hand and the stars in her hair were seven her robe ungirt from clasp to hem no wrought flowers did adorn but a white rose of mary's gift for service meetly worn her hair that lay along her back was yellow like ripe corn her seemed she scarce had been a day one of god's choristers the wonder was not yet quite gone from that still look of hers albeit to them she left her day had counted as ten years to one it is ten years of years yet now and in this place surely she leaned o'er me her hair fell all about my face nothing the autumn fall of leaves the whole year sets apace it was the rampart of god's house that she was standing on by god built over the sheer depth the witch's space begun so high that looking downward thence she scarce could see the sun it lies in heaven across the flood of ether as a bridge beneath the tides of day and night with flame and darkness ridge the void as low as where this earth spins like a fretful midge around her lovers newly met mid deathless love's acclaims spoke evermore among themselves their heart remembered names and the souls mounting up to god went by her like thin flames and still she bowed herself and stooped out of the circling charm until her bosom must have made the bar she leaned on warm and the lilies lay as if asleep along her bended arm from the fixed place of heaven she saw time like a pulse shake fierce through all the worlds her gaze still strove within the gulf to pierce its path and now she spoke as when the stars sang in their spheres the sun was gone now the curled moon was like a little feather fluttering far down the gulf and now she spoke through the still weather her voice was like the voice the stars had when they sang together ah sweet even now in that bird's song strove not her accents there fain to be hearkened when those bells possessed the midday air strove not her steps to reach my side down all the echoing stair i wish that he were come to me for he will come she said have i not prayed in heaven on earth lord lord has he not prayed are not two prayers a perfect strength and shall i feel afraid when round his head the aureole clings and he is clothed in white i'll take his hand and go with him to the deep wells of light as unto a stream we will step down and bathe there in god's sight we too will stand beside that shrine occult withheld untrod whose lamps are stirred continually with prayer sent up to god and see our old prayers granted melt each like a little cloud we too will lie in the shadow of that living mystic tree within whose secret growth the dove is sometimes felt to be while every leaf that his plumes touch saith his name audibly and i myself will teach to him i myself lying so the songs i sing here which his voice shall pause in hushed and slow and find some knowledge at each pause or some new thing to know alas we too we too thou sayest yea one wast thou with me that once of old 
but shall God lift to endless unity the soul whose likeness with thy soul was but its love for thee? We too, she said, will seek the groves where the Lady Mary is, with her five handmaidens, whose names are five sweet symphonies. Cecily, Gertrude, Maudlin, Margaret, and Rosalie's. Circle why sit they, with bound locks and foreheads garlanded, into the fine cloth white like flame, weaving the golden thread, to fashion the birth roads for them, who are just born, being dead. He shall fear haply and be dumb, then will I lay my cheek to his, and tell about our love, not once abashed or weak. And the dear mother will approve my pride, and let me speak. Herself shall bring us, hand in hand, to him round whom all souls kneel, the clear-ranged, unnumbered heads, bowed with their aureoles. And angels meeting us shall sing, to their citterns and sittles. There will I ask of Christ the Lord, thus much for him and me, only to live as once on earth with love, only to be, as then a while, forever now, together, I and he. She gazed and listened, and then said, less sad of speech than mild. All this is when he comes. She ceased. The light thrilled towards her, filled with angels in strong level flight. Her eyes prayed, and she smiled. I saw her smile, but soon their path was vague in distant spheres, and then she cast her arms along the golden barriers, and laid her face between her hands, and wept. I heard her tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The King's Highway by Harriet Waters Preston From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The King's Highway, October 6, 1892 I'll wake and watch this autumn night Till the slow dawn is grey Lest I should miss a noble sight upon the king's highway for now the far enthroned king to whom all flesh shall come a glorious message sends to bring his exiled minstrel home and i may see the guards in white troop round him crowned with bay and many a starry torch alight along the king's highway may see against the ebon skies the banners backward blow, and hear the Eopian rise about them as they go. What vigil would it not requite that glorious array, that sure and stately march forthright along the king's highway? I heard the bells of midnight sound from many an unseen tower, but for the minstrel homeward bound I could not watch one hour. And now, how strange the growing light, how blank the morning grey, what stillness after yesternight broods on the king's highway. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.